say it first. Yeah. Th thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, since a few days ago, I was promoted into presenter, so I no. apologize, okay. but I do have a short okay. presentation. <laughs> okay, you're I hope that's fine. Uh, <laughs> start with okay so my name is Saad Alhudic well very close mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, in charge of international ideas elections and conflict project I joined the idea uh, five years ago and for you who may not know international idea is intergovernmental organization of 28 member states we have a mandate to support democratic processes and institutions around the world now elections and conflict project is a uh, is a focus on development of electoral risk management tool which was piloted in partnership with the uh, uh, Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission of Kenya uh, in the context of 2013 elections. So this presentation is, is uh, aimed to share some, some of our experiences. Um, now let me, let me kind of shortly look into uh, the phenomenon of election-related violence. It's, it's well established that elections can trigger violence. However, and we have heard uh, already uh, from uh, all, uh, all presenters, Elections are not a monolith block. They are processes and they are composed of many building blocks. And each of these building blocks can trigger or contribute to triggering election-related violence. So for example, if uh, political actors feel that uh, electoral processes are not a uh, level playing field, they may decide to boycott elections, to resort to violent means and so on. Uh, we have seen in many cases uh, where the lack of trust in election management bodies has uh, triggered or contributed to triggering electoral violence. Uh, Kenya is, is, is a very good case <coughs> in 2007. And we can go around the electoral cycle and look uh, at different factors which can uh, contribute to electoral violence. These are just few. But it's also important to notice that uh, electoral violence can take place at any point of time during the electoral, electoral cycle. Now, the, 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 the problem with this slide is that uh, elections do not take place in a vacuum. Right. There is always a wider social context in which election take place. And this context may be uh, already violent or uh, we can see tensions and uh, many different uh, structural factors of conflict at, at sea. So ethnic and religious conflicts, organized crime, neighborhood violence, um, terrorist attacks, violence against women, corruption, poverty, and so on. These others are to say that uh, while uh, elections can uh, ex ex exacerbate violence in, in the conflict-prone societies and, and, and uh, trigger violent outbreaks, also uh, existing violence can spill over into electoral processes and affect electoral actors, electoral events, electoral materials, and uh, electoral uh, facilities. Uh, we also tried to look into what would be a buffer to, to, to this uh, problem. Now, it may be fair to say that state building processes will help. Uh, political institutions will help channeling social conflicts into institutional frameworks. Economic development, human security, justice, rule of law, reconciliation, and so on will help. But the problem with the, with the state building is that uh, it may take several years or several decades, and elections cannot be put on hold until we have uh, all preconditions for peaceful elections. Now, this is to say that in some countries, and especially in conflict-prone societies, uh, organizing elections entail taking a risk that there can be a violence. And this is unfortunate truth. And uh, in particular, because elections constitute a very important building block of, of uh, state building processes. Now, why did I run fast uh, through this slide? I have shown this exact slide to the uh, several commissioners of the interim independent electoral commission of Kenya a few years back, uh, including uh, Chairman Isaac Hassan. And uh, I got quite a good feedback from them. They said that they could associate Kenyan context with, with this uh, framework and uh, also their challenges. So they expressed interest to learn about international ideas, electoral risk management tool. And further on, they have invited us to uh, pilot this tool uh, in partnership with the IBC during these elections. So we engaged in Kenya in, uh, in late 2011. We started with a, with a baseline analysis workshop where we invited uh, uh, different stakeholders <coughs> from Kenya, including the com election uh, commission officials, security sector agencies, um, 
civil society organizations and, and, and so on, but we also uh, together commissioned a, a public opinion survey to look into risk analysis. Now our tool has a uh, one, one module of it is a GIS, uh, GIS software that, that helps us to, to generate electoral risk map. And this was a Kenyan ele electoral risk map in, in November 2011. From that point of time, we have established team. Uh, it was small analytical hub at the IBC that was collecting information and analyzing information internally and, and information that was received from the, from the external agencies. Um, if you can compare with the map from uh, August 2012, we can see that there was uh, some uh, shift in, in electoral risks. This um, has probably something to do with <coughs> the engagement of a uh, Kenyan army in, in Somalia to fight Al-Shabaab, which resulted in, in the retaliatory attacks on the Kenyan soil. We have seen viol intercommunal violence in Tana River. We have also seen <coughs> activities of Mombasa Republican Council. Now this was just to, to, to say that, that the risks can change even, even in, I guess, in, in March, the, the November map was, was out to date. So to understand the electoral risk, one really need to constantly uh, collect that and to analyze that. The, the project was mainly uh, concerned on, on creation of electoral risk maps that will um, uh, help IBC to make better informed and conflict sensitive electoral decisions, but also those risk alerts have been exchange through Viano Platform for Peace with, with, with other partners in, in, in Kenya, including security sector agencies and civil <coughs> sector. Now, I should probably say that uh, um, among electoral risk factors in Kenya, poor water registration was, was, was indicated as a risk. In particular, there was a fear that there may be that uh, political stakeholders may try to bus water from one to another constituency so that they can change ethnic balances and ensure that, uh, that uh, respective candidates are elected. And when voter registration process uh, was completed, um, there was an understanding that in some areas uh, voter registration was below 50% of expected and in other areas there was over 100%. Now, when we took that data and, and, and uploaded the uh, information into the tool, we have generated this map and this was somewhat comforting because uh, one would not expect having in mind Kenyan infrastructure that a uh, large number of waters have been bust from the orange regions into, into central parts of, of a Kenya. But still, uh, the whole methodology has suggested that this, this issue is, is investigated. There were so many uh, risk maps which were created and risk, risk alerts, but this may be of your interest because uh, during the, the voting operation period, uh, uh, the staff from the uh, IBC, the analytical hub, have set together to, uh, with, with, the, with the organization which, uh, uh, which create Uviano uh, Platform for Peace. Uh, this data was collected and constantly analyzed. Uh, data came from a security sector agencies, Amani 108 and, and so on. And uh, through the use of, of IDEA tool, we have constantly created uh, uh, risk alerts and, and, and updates. And as you can see, fortunately, and we all can uh, witness, uh, that uh, elections were quite peaceful, so uh, prevailing color was, was green. And uh, it was also important that we distingu distinguished between election-related violence and, and just uh, regular violence because c criminal organizations and the group do not take a leave during the election period. I mean, and that's, that's something that uh, always needs to be always needs to be considered. In terms of uh, lessons learned, um, from the narrow perspective of our project, and uh, we, the, the project was, was, was designed in a way that we are not there, but everything is done by the IBC and locally recruited staff. We just uh, supported them through advisors. Um, we can, again, think about some lessons learned and. Uh, I can be challenged on, on all of these points, but I'm, I'm quite happy to notice that this may really link well with, with what uh, uh, my predecessors were talking about. Now, international idea suggests a three-layered approach for prevention and mitigation of election-related violence. Um, improved electoral management and justice relates to the uh, role of the uh, election management bodies and electoral dispute resolution uh, organizations. Uh, improved electoral security is about uh, security sector agencies engagement and improved infrastructure for peace 
is to cover all other state and non-state actors who have been engaged in promoting peace and peaceful conflict resolution during the election period. Now let me try to, to provide a short analysis. Elections in Kenya are not over. Eh? There is a, an epilogue is, is still to come. But from my perspective, very narrow understanding from this project, I can, I can say this. Comparing and especially comparing to 2007, I would say there was a great improvement el in electoral uh, management. IBC Kenya has been very reputable throughout the process. The way in which they were appointed, it was televised, uh, interviews, uh, vetting uh, processes, uh, public opinion uh, polls confirmed that uh, IBC it was the most trusted Kenyan, Kenyan uh, institution uh, in the during the last year. Uh, also, uh, they have managed until today to preserve their integrity. Oh, we should not forget that they have handled few hot potatoes. There was a uh, issue of boundary delimitation, which was challenged, announcement of the election day, procurement of election material, technical problems with the transmission, the announcement of election results, and so on and so on. In a two weeks, we will have a response from the from the Supreme Court and. Uh, uh, IBC has few more answers uh, to provide, but uh, I, I, I would say this is on a positive note. Also, it is evident that they need uh, that there is a space for them to improve the technical capacity, and I can say that I, c I, I think that they that they will build on this experience. Security sector agencies again we see huge improvement comparing to the <coughs> last elections where security sector agencies were heavily criticized for their roles, for the excessive use of force, abuse of mandate, and so on. Now they have adhered to professional standards. They've been able to, to respond. The election day started with the, with the killing of four police officers, and uh, still uh, the reinforcements were there. In, in really short time, they, they reassured voters that uh, elections can be uh, safeguarded, and uh, there was a huge turnout even, even in those regions. Area to improve always a capacity of security sector agencies to understand electoral processes and through this specific project actually there was a uh, there was a printing of of uh, of uh, pocket handbooks for police officers and now going to these infra infrastructures for peace in my view this was the, the the key variable in the kenyan peace equation this year and uh, very much related to to what has happened in in, in ghana in previous year the effort was massive uh, from the grassroots level, we have seen individuals, uh, traditional leaders, uh, religious leaders, and uh, faith-based groups. We have seen a civil society organization, business community, journalists, international diplomatic effort. It was huge. It was huge. A lot of so many people have worked in Kenya in the last few years to promote peace, peaceful conflict resolution, having in mind, having in mind election day. And I, I was just, uh, you know, I, I would say that they were really essential. Now, what will be interesting is to see whether now when the, when the reflector lights will shift from Kenya, whether <coughs> these infrastructures for peace can be sustained. Um, and uh, I guess this was... Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.